हेलो एवरीबडी माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर मिसेस प्रीति सुनील जोशी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटीज एंड साइंसेस वालचंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर आई वेलकम यू टू द सेशन ऑफ वेव ऑप्टिक्स इन विच वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द डिफ्रैक्शन एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू डिफाइन बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ डिफ्रैक्शन and learn about different types of diffraction that is fresnel and fraunhofer the contents include introduction and types of diffraction diffraction phenomena demonstrates wave behavior of light it is a familiar experience that path of light is rectilinear we know that if an opaque obstacle is placed in the path of light a sharp shadow is cast on the screen representing the rectilinear nature of light but when the light passes through an aperture it spreads into the area of geometrical shadow also now let us see another example you have been observed that the light fades in bathroom or another example is about the street lights they seem to fade on foggy days so why this happens actually light has two kinds of properties of electromagnetic waves and particles the phenomena we have just mentioned result from diffraction which is one of light's characteristics as a wave diffraction occurs when light hits and bends around an object in a bathroom light hits steam particles which cause it to bend around and fade there are two types of wave diffraction diffraction occurs when light hits an obstacle and then bends around the edge of the object the light bends as shown in figure 1 figure 2 shows another light diffraction example through a slit in the board light is a wave so if it goes through a narrow slit or a small hole it changes from a plane wave to a spherical one this transformation is the same as with waves of water diffraction describes that change in light's direction as the light wave becomes spherical it spreads and weakens after surrounding a small object or passing through a slit making it seem to fade light passing through a hole forms ripples one interesting diffraction phenomena occurs when light passes through a pin hole in the board light passing directly through a pin hole would seem to create a spotlight but this is just an illusion you actually get a circle pattern with ripples of brightness and darkness the sharpest bright spot is at the center and ripples expand further out around the center we call this the diffraction image this rippling is quantified in what we call a two dimensional fourier transformation some scientists have proposed the concept of an optical computer which would use the diffraction of light to make calculations with greater speed so we can define diffraction as the bending of waves around an obstacle and deviation from a rectilinear path is called diffraction now let us see the dependence of diffraction phenomena on wavelength the waves do not bend around the edges when the size of the aperture is large compared to the wavelength as shown in figure a the waves do not bend around the edges when the opening is small as shown in figure c the aperture acts as a source of secondary wavelets these secondary waves propagate in all directions this effect is observable quite close to the opening when the size of opening is very small when the opening is large diffraction effect is observed at greater distances from the opening we can see here the water waves diffracting through two different sized openings diffraction effects are small when the slit is much larger than the incident lambda that is wavelength and the waves are diffracted more through the narrower opening 
when wavelength is larger than the opening. Now let us see what is diffraction pattern. Diffraction pattern is the alternate bright and dark bands observed during the diffraction phenomena. The bright central portion is known as central maximum and it is bounded on either side by a series of secondary maxima by dark bands which are called minima. The successive bright and band becomes less intense moving away from the central maximum. The presence of the bright region clearly indicates that light has reached there showing there by bending of light beam. The maxima and minima are created by interference of diffracted light waves. For demonst demonstration, just hold your index and middle fingers close to each other, leaving a small slit between them about 1 mm in width. Look through the slit into a source of light such as a window or a lamp. You will need to close with one eye up close to the slit. You will be able to see a number of vertical dark lines between the fingers. Pause the video and try this. So where do these vertical lines come from? They are dark fringes caused by destructive interference of light when it diffracts through your fingertips. Second diagram shows the diffraction bands produced by a razor blade. This phenomena can be explained using Huygens principle. Huygens pictures every point on a primary wavefront as a source of secondary wavelets and the sum of these secondary waves determines the form of waves at any subsequent time. Hence, each of these secondary wavelets can interfere with one another. Constructive interference takes place when the difference in path lengths between two coherent waves is an integer multiple of the wavelength. This is when <coughs> the resultant wave is the brightest. Destructive interference occurs when that difference in path length is, is a half integer of the wavelength. For example, 1 by 2 lambda, 3 by 2 lambda, 5 by 2 lambda, etc. and gives a dark fringe. The alternating bright and dark fringes is a diffraction pattern which becomes observable by the eye looking through the slit. In general, diffraction occurs whenever a portion of a wavefront is obstructed in some way. The basic idea that explains diffraction is based on Huygens theory. The behavior of light beyond the screen with an aperture can be qualitatively explained with the aid of Huygens principle. The portion of the wavefront that is incident on the opaque portion of the screen is obstructed while a small portion of the wavefront is allowed to pass through the aperture. Every point on this portion of the wavefront acts as a center of spherical secondary wavelets. Constructing the envelope of these secondary wavelets, we find that the wave spreads into the region of geometric shadow bending around the edges of the aperture. Fresnel merged the Huygens principle with the Young's concept of interference of waves and explained the occurrence of alternate dark and bright bands as due to the superposition and interference of waves. The points on the primary wavefront are mutually coherent and the secondary waves emitted by them are therefore coherent and are also of the same frequency as that of the primary wave and interfere. Now pause the video and write down some differences between interference and diffraction. These are the main differences between interference and diffraction. Now come, coming to types of diffraction. The diffraction phenomena are broadly classified into two types as Fresnel diffraction and Fraunhofer diffraction. First we will see Fresnel diffraction. In this type of diffraction, the source and the screen are effectively at finite distances from the obstacle. Lenses are not used to make the parallel, make them parallel. The incident wavefront is either spherical or cylindrical. 
it is not planar as a result the phase of secondary wavelets is not the same at all points in the plane of the obstacle the resultant amplitude at any point of the screen is obtained by the mutual interference of secondary wavelets from different elements of unblocked portions of the wavefront it is experimentally simple but the analysis is complex then fraunhofer diffraction in this type of diffraction the source of light and the screen are effectively at infinite distances from the obstacle the conditions required for fraunhofer diffraction are achieved by two convex lenses one to make the light from the source parallel and the other to focus the light after diffraction onto the screen the incident wavefront as such is plane and the secondary wavelets which originate from the unblocked portions of the wavefront are in the same phase at every point in the plane of the obstacle the diffraction is produced by the interference between parallel rays which are brought into focus with the help of a convex lens this problem is simple to handle mathematically as the rays are parallel these are the references for this session thank you